These 10 things are absolutely killing your testosterone. As a man, testosterone is the hormone responsible for your energy levels, your confidence, your mood, your libido, and even your drive and your ambition. If your testosterone levels are too low, no wonder you feel lethargic all of the time and you can't even focus for 10 minutes straight. And the worst part is that you might not even realize that it's the small everyday things that you do that are killing your testosterone levels. So here's exactly how you can fix that. Starting with number one, poor sleep. Let's be honest, how do you feel after only getting six hours of sleep. Some people, they might say they feel fine, but for most people, six hours of sleep, it is just not enough. And that is especially true if you have a physical activity during the day. In fact, for sedentary individuals, they need 7.5 hours of sleep up to 8.5 hours of sleep on average. And keep in mind that time spent in bed does not necessarily equal to time spent asleep. Typically, it takes 15 to 30 minutes to fall asleep. So if you're in bed for 7.5 hours, you're only really sleeping seven to seven hours and 15 minutes. But we've all experienced just waking up, sleeping terribly, and the whole day is ruined. Productivity is insanely low, you're irritable, you're kind of depressed. Life is just a lot worse when you don't get enough sleep. And if you think that you can sleep less to be more productive, to work more, you are shooting yourself in the foot. 35% of all US adults report sleeping less than 7 hours per night on average. And 30% of US adults report having symptoms of insomnia. That's actually a lot. So right now, the biggest thing to fix your sleep is just look, am I spending a enough time in bed. Like I said, if you're sedentary, you should spend at least 7.5 hours in bed. Now, if you work out regularly, like over an hour a day, your sleep needs would be closer to 9 to 9.5 hours in bed every night. And most teenagers don't get enough rest. They don't get the deep sleep that they need. They stay up late at night, they're on social media, they play video games, they chat on Discord. But if you're a teenager and you're watching this video right now, you are in your building years. Because what you do right now at this very precise moment in your life, it's going to determine mean what kind of future you'll have. Use your time wisely. You have an advantage, if anything. As a teen, you have more time than somebody who's got a career, a wife and kids. So use that time to get ahead of your peers and to crush every single one of your goals. Because it might be fun right now to play video games for hours on end every day, to watch Netflix all night, but you are robbing your future self of an incredible life. But at the same time, it's good news for the high achievers and for the people who are willing to put in the work day after day. Because with all of the distractions that we have going on, nowadays. Social media, TV, Netflix, video games. It's never been easier to beat the competition because most people are not focused, they're distracted. In fact, on the average eight hour workday, most people only really work for three to four hours a day. So in three hours of focused work per day, you can get more done than most people actually do in eight hours. So don't neglect your sleep. First, focus on how much time you spend in bed and then just basic sleep hygiene. Try to not use screens before bed or use the night shift filter. And I really advise you against watching a horror movie anyway before going to bed and then keep a consistent bedtime schedule and wake up at the same time every day even on the weekends. Moving on to testosterone killer number two, chronic stress. The thing with stress is that it's good. For instance, when you work hard, when you work out, your body is going through a lot of stress and that's a good thing because if you lift weights in the gym, you're tearing your muscle fibers so that then they can be rebuilt bigger and stronger. So without the stress, there would be no need for the muscle adaptations. However, PTSD is not a good kind of stress. Chronic stress is deadly. Just think about the state of the mental health of a guy who just witnessed war and losing everything. So naturally, the question is, how do we reduce our level of stress? The first thing is that you want to change your mindset. Now, it sounds a bit woo-woo, but trust me, it has a huge impact. To give you an example, what I've noticed personally is that when I get bad news, my energy drops instantly. It saps all of my energy sometimes. It's insane. But when you have a win, how do you feel? Probably you start to feel good about yourself, right? So every day, focus on the small wins. And by doing this, you build up the winner effect. Because every time you win, it becomes easier to win again because you start to increase your self-belief, your self-confidence. And the more you believe in yourself, the bigger the challenges you'll be willing to face and the bigger the potential payouts. Then you can use some healthy outlets for your emotions like boxing, like the gym, like meditation, like taking a warm bath, journaling. Something else that you can do is to have a night routine before bed to ensure that you get the most optimal deep sleep. And something which is especially good to do before bed, it's to meditate or to read a book either on paper or on a Kindle as long as you put the brightness on a low level. Number three, having a sedentary lifestyle. Now, most people nowadays have office jobs, so they spend most of their time sitting behind the computer screen. So this has two negative effects. First, they don't get nearly enough sunlight, and so it's going to mess up with the quality of their sleep, of their hormones, and you'll guess it, of their testosterone production. And so then after working eight hours inside this cubicle, they come back home, they're too tired to cook, so they just microwave some garbage from the supermarket, which contains lots of 
sugars, additives, and chemicals that kill your health, literally. And then they watch TV or they play video games because they're exhausted and they want to be entertained. So then they're even more sedentary. You need to understand that our bodies are made to move. Hunter-gatherers spend a lot of time walking, hunting for food. Exercising one hour a day is great, but I wouldn't advise to go from being completely sedentary to straight up working out one hour a day. I personally exercise for around an hour and a half, an hour 15 every morning before I get to work, but I didn't start off by exercising that much. You need to start small, because if you overdo it, you'll never stick to it, believe me. Moving on to testosterone killer number four, taking antidepressant medication. You need to understand that most antidepressant medications contain substances which interfere with your body's natural testosterone production. So if you really can avoid it taking antidepressant medications, please avoid it. Now I know that for some people, they have lost a closed one, they've gone through some kind of traumatic event, so they're going to take antidepressants because otherwise they feel like hell, and it might be a short-term solution, but ideally on the long term it would be wise to stop taking antidepressants. But I would argue that the real reason why most people face depressive symptoms is because they don't wake up every day with a purpose, with a mission. If you don't have anything to work towards, life just becomes tasteless, meaningless. So instead they just end up wasting their time on video games, on Netflix, on eating junk food, because they don't have a big goal to chase after that motivates them to jump out of bed every morning, to work hard, to give it their everything. And the only way you'll wake up with that burning fire inside of you to conquer the world, it's if you have a stronger, deep reason why you do things. Human beings are able to withstand incredible, unthinkable levels of pain as long as they have a strong enough reason. The best example I can give you is, think about the guy in a concentration camp. He wants to get back to his daughter to protect her. That is an insanely strong reason to stay alive, to fight and to do whatever the hell it takes to survive. Number five, consuming alcohol. Alcohol like nicotine is a drug, but it is an absolute poison. Because alcohol is not only used less efficiently for energy, but it alters metabolic pathways. So literally alcohol messes up your body in a way that even sugar does not. It weakens your immune system, it increases your blood pressure, and also you're just drinking so many calories without any minerals, vitamins, nutrients, and that's why you see so many guys with beer bellies. Now people tend to use alcohol as a crutch because they are addicted. They're running away from something. Oftentimes the bad habits are not the problem itself. Rather, they are the band-aid covering up this big wound. So if you struggle with alcohol or with any other bad habit, you really need to dive deep and try to figure out what's the root cause. Because until you eliminate that root cause, you'll find that you'll always fall back for that bad habit. Moving on to the other thing which is destroying your testosterone levels, the average diet. We literally live in a world where it became normal for kids to eat 200 grams of sugar for breakfast. It's literally the first meal of the day, yet you feed it with 200 grams of sugar without any nutrients, any proteins, it's literally just sugar. Most people don't seem to understand that just because it's breakfast, the body does not make an exception. Like most people would think it's unacceptable to eat sugary breakfast cereals or pastries for lunch and that's all you eat or for dinner. However, it seems to be just fine for breakfast for whatever reason. But like I said, your body does not care. Your body doesn't know if it's lunch, dinner or breakfast. It's a meal either way. Most people typically eat foods that are highly processed that contain lots of calories but barely any nutrients, minerals and vitamins. And that is how they end up with so many deficiencies. And even if you eat something which looks healthy, like for instance drinking an orange juice, it is not the same thing as peeling an orange and eating it. Because to make like one glass of orange juice, you need way more than just one orange. You need lots of oranges. So you're drinking the sugar from the orange and you're not going to be satiated. But trust me, if you eat three oranges, you're going to be pretty satiated. You're not going to want to eat anything else. And you'll get all the fiber, all the minerals, all the vitamins. So focus on eating the raw ingredients instead of their modified versions. I mean, we literally have an obesity epidemic right now. The World Obesity Foundation predicts that half the population will be overweight or obese within just 12 years. And currently, nowadays, over 1 billion people all over the world have obesity. So what you want to do is to eat mostly healthy, unprocessed, single ingredients food. Like if you buy a broccoli, what's the ingredient? Broccoli. Not broccoli, chemical, 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 sugar, this, that, this. Like when you eat a burger at McDonald's, there's literally 20 ingredients per ingredient. Like to make the cheese, they need to use 20 other ingredients. Of course, it's going to mess up your health and your hormones. And let's be honest, most of the time people know what is healthy. Everybody knows that a pizza is not healthy. Everybody knows that some chicken breast, some broccoli, some fruit is healthy. So most people know that. They're just not making the effort. Some foods might be tricky, like dairy might be controversial. But things like meat, vegetables, fruits, everybody knows those things are good for you. Now, something else which is completely destroying your testosterone levels is having a high body fat percentage. When it comes to your body fat percentage, exercise plays a part. But if lots of people are overweight or obese, it's not because they don't exercise enough. Rather,
whether it's because of what they consume. Because you can do no exercise at all, but if you eat very healthy, you don't eat too many calories, you're never going to be overweight. So exercise matters when it comes to weight regulation, but your food intake matters a lot more. Now it's very hard to estimate your accurate body fat percentage. And even machines like the DEXA scan, they actually just guess your body fat percentage. They're not accurate by any means. So don't focus on, oh, I want to be 10% body fat, because you don't know if you're 10% body fat. And if you look good, you feel good, you're healthy, who cares if it's 10 or 12? Instead, if you're overweight, for instance, focus on just dropping some weight. You'll clearly see it just by looking at yourself in the mirror, by taking your measurements, by weighing yourself. You'll see if you're making progress or not. You'll see if you're getting healthier. Now, too low of a body fat percentage is a problem, but too high is a problem as well. So you need to find the sweet spot. But like I said, just by looking in the mirror, taking your measurements, your weight, you'll clearly know if you're healthy or not. So don't obsess over body fat percentages. Now, the other thing which is destroying your testosterone is your mindset. Now, I know it sounds a bit woo-woo, but please bear with me here. Your mindset, the way that you think about things, your thought patterns, they play a crucial role in your everyday life. To give you an example, when I'm at the gym, if I let myself get distracted, if I start to have negative thoughts, if I don't believe in my ability to push hard, to lift heavy and to do my set correctly, most of the time my performance goes down. However, if I have positive self-talk, if I think, you know what, I can do this, if I prepare myself mentally, usually the outcome is a lot better than if I don't. And to give you another example, if somebody has a terrible mindset, let's say they have a goal, they want to start a business maybe, or to get fit, they might have that goal. But because they have such a bad mindset, they're not even going to start because they don't think that they can achieve that. Or if they do start, they will do things halfway. And so they'll always be stuck in this position where they don't have what they want, but they're still putting in some work, so it's very frustrating. And so then no wonder why they quit. And to give you another example, when I get some very bad news, my energy levels, they drop immediately. All of a sudden, I have no energy. It's like it's been drained out of me. And I'm sure you can remember one day where this happened to you as well. Maybe you got some bad news, something bad happened, and all of a sudden, you feel lethargic. So start changing your thoughts. Now, I'm not saying that you have to pretend to have what you want to have, or if you want to be a millionaire, I'm not saying that you should repeat a bunch of affirmations like, oh, I am a millionaire, I make millions of dollars, my life is amazing, because honestly, you know it's not true. It doesn't feel good to play pretend with those BS affirmations. But instead, what you can do is to think like a muscular or a jacked guy would, if your goal is to become jacked or a millionaire. Align your thoughts with your goals. Moving on to testosterone killer number nine, watching porn. Now, porn is completely destroying your testosterone. And in fact, it is probably the worst thing that you can do to kill your testosterone. As a man, pretty much everything that you do on a subconscious level, it is motivated by the desire to procreate. So if you watch porn every day or even a couple times a week and you do your thing, you're signaling to your brain that, oh, that's it, you're a success, you've done the job. So now you can just relax and have fun. When in reality, you have so much more to accomplish and it's going to take hard work, perseverance, and a lot of sacrifice. People who watch porn have a lower life satisfaction on average than people who don't. And the reason why is because they are frying their dopamine receptors with so much dopamine which was not earned. It's a fake pleasure, it's a fake reward. And to put this in perspective, eating is going to boost your dopamine levels by 150%, smoking by 200%, and watching porn by 200%. 150%. And the worst part about it is that the negative side effects are going to last a lot longer than with any of the other easy access sources of instant gratification and of dopamine. So if you just fry your brain with so much dopamine, in comparison, everything is going to feel meaningless and tasteless. After you watch porn and you do your thing, you're not going to want to go to the gym and to lift some heavy weights. You're not going to want to sit down in front of your computer screen and crush three hours of boring deep work. And also it increases social anxiety. How many guys just jerk off and do their thing? and then they can't even look people in the eyes. So not only does it completely kill your testosterone, it also kills your ability to be social and it destroys your self-esteem and your life satisfaction. And I know it might be hard to quit if you have an addiction, but trust me, it will be well worth it when you stop doing it. Now the other thing which is destroying your testosterone is poor mental health. Most guys don't pay enough attention to the state of their mental health. If you struggle with some things, let's say relationships, you need to dive deep and to figure out if you have some kind of childhood trauma or very negative past experiences that are negative negatively affecting you. To give you an example, personally, I thought that I needed to be perfection itself, otherwise nobody would ever love me. Oftentimes, guys spend so much time watching porn, playing video games, watching Netflix, eating junk food, because they are depressed. A happy guy who loves his life, he wouldn't want to play video games for 12 hours straight, while also fapping and eating garbage and doing drugs. Why would he do that? He's happy, he's fulfilled. A while ago, I read this book called Be Obsessed or Be Average by Grant Cardone. And in that book, he explained that everybody has to be obsessed with something. But the thing is, if you're not obsessed, 
obsessed with like health and fitness, with building your career, making more money, or maybe, you know, finding the love of your life. If you're not obsessed with a positive goal, then naturally that energy, that obsession that we all have in us, it has to go somewhere. And so for most people, it's going to go into video games, into consuming mindless, pointless content on social media all day. So instead of wasting your energy on those things, you can put it towards achieving your goals. So if you fix these 10 things, I can guarantee that your testosterone levels are going to go up. And not only that, but you'll be more social, more confident, you'll have a better life satisfaction, and you will achieve your goals a lot more easily. Because to achieve your goals, what matters oftentimes is to remove all of the obstacles that are in your path. Now, if you are an ambitious individual and you want to live the best possible life ever, you want to have abundance, freedom, you want to be able to travel whenever you want, to spoil the people that you love, to buy anything that you want without having to look at the price tag, you need to start your own online business. So for that reason, I have recorded a free video in which I'm going to analyze every popular online business model. Together, we are going to take a look at the pros, at the cons of every business model, and I'm also going to share with you for completely free the three-step process that you can start implementing today to start getting your first customers. If you're interested, the link is in the description below.